Hi, this is Rene with Green Air Farm Farm. I uh, just want to show you an update of our food forest. We started this, uh, well, actually a couple of years ago, I planted some of the uh, figs and things like that. But basically, uh, working on the soil, we started this year. We showed a, a video back in May on how we started. And this is a little bit of an update. And I want to show you if uh, my wife can uh, focus on this. This is what all that look like. And it's basically right underneath all that is, is rock. Very hard to dig here. It's very hard to grow anything here. Even the grass doesn't want to grow here. So let's walk this way, starting right here. As you can see, it's totally different. Very, very uh, close to that part. But right here is where our little food forest starts. And we're using agroforestry principles, and you were just chop, uh, chop and drop, and we're using a lot of our worm castings and a lot of uh, organic material to basically we're feeding the soil, we add in the, the the worm castings, and we're basically feeding the soil. We're feeding the micros in the soil. Okay, so that allows us to grow plants. Uh, that you know we couldn't grow before. So you don't soil... tilt here. There's huh? also permaculture uh, yes, uh, principles. You don't tilt. Agroforestry, permaculture. It's it's all. Uh, we're using all that to improve the soil here. Okay, using our modern castings, we add the micros, and then of course, as you can see in our teacher, we feed the micros. Okay, so. This here is a mulberry. I bought this thing about uh, six inches. It was extremely small. And in four months, I already cut the top once because it was getting too tall. But look how fast this is growing in this. <laughs> and if you can see and here- What is this tree? Mulberry. Mulberry. The everbearing mulberry. As you can see here, we just had piles and piles of grass and all sorts of uh, nutritious uh, organic matter mm -hmm. and look at that soil look at that it's all compost it's really really good soil okay and now that we've been working on this uh for about uh, the soil itself for about seven months we just keep adding stuff and like this napier grass here uh, also called elephant grass as you can see i have a large row of it all the way to the other end. So you created a wall to frame the and area. Basically a wall, but what we're doing is we're using that, we're chopping it, and we're adding it to the soil. All that organic matter just feeds the soil. Those are bio uh, mass uh, plants that I have uh, grown several different types to be able to add to the soil, get the microbial life uh, you know, going. going really fast and improving the soil. You can see here we have a, a red banana mm -hmm. and we actually have little bananas here. It probably won't make it because it'll get caught pretty soon, but it's, uh, this is, I planted all this. Actually, all this area here, oh, cute. all the bananas. way down, I planted this year, back uh, only four or five months ago. So all this, all the way over there is, is new. All this area here is brand new. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is in the last four months here. We have planted all that and we have uh, Meyer lemon. We have uh, th This is a mandarin yeah. uh, Orange you got like three or four moringa trees on this area very yeah. tall uh -huh. You can see well the moringa trees that those were planted about three years ago oh, Okay, and they're huge, but the thing is they die all the way down to the ground mm -hmm. and then they'll they'll uh, you know come back out in April as you can see, they get huge. That's probably you 18... You five, six months growth. Right. That's mm -hmm. 18, 20 feet uh, tall. So here we also... Let me show you some other things. We have uh, the Egyptian spinach here. Mm -hmm. We have over there, we have melons. Yeah. Okay. And we have uh, tomatoes and peppers and all that. All those plants, all those plants are in this area. There's a little pineapple over there. But don't walk in there. Okay, so you have here the... the you're, you're walking up my plants. 
you have the lemongrass, okay? Yeah. You have the pollinators over there, the vitex. You have some Mexican petunias, so you're actually yeah, mixing, mixing all uh, the plants. Things. Right here, so you can see all this. This is um, uh, sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. okay? Next month, we'll take them out. But there's sweet potatoes all over the place. There's is that the, the ornamental potato the, vine? The sweet potato over there, the, the light one is the ornamental. Yeah, which it provides excellent uh, uh, shade and it protects the ground by keeping the moisture. But also here, this is a, this is a banana. This mm -hmm. is a dwarf banana. Mm -hmm. It's the Cavendish. Um, we just planted this one uh, probably about three or four months ago. So by next year, when it comes out again, it should be pretty tall. Okay. But it is the dwarf, so it's only going to grow about seven, eight feet. Okay. Uh, over here, this is a apple tree. Mm -hmm. uh, it was planted in another area. wasn't doing absolutely anything. It was just a little stick. We planted it in this area, and it's doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. It has a papaya for a companion. Okay. But all this area here is um, pumpkins. Mm -hmm. We harvest few pumpkins from here. We have made soups and also I feed it to my worms. So this is great so thing to have. So that honeydew... Uh, uh, the honeydew melons. Melons, we, ha we have several We actually have those. three. They're, oh, I have to, they're underneath those uh, rocks because I have to protect them from, the, okay. from my friends, the squirrels. But, as you can see, uh, as she can show you from here, this goes all the way down to the fence. Mm -hmm. And we have several large trees. Uh, we have a persimmon. Uh, we have loquats. We have a lot of figs, and we have gotten hundreds and hundreds of figs out of our figs uh, since we started uh, ag adding nutrition to the soil. So, all of these is, uh, are the, all, all these vines? All these vines are for pumpkins. Okay. So pumpkins we use in the winter time to feed the worms mm -hmm. and we also eat them. Can but, we go down there very quick? Yes, yes. Stay behind me. Okay. Yeah. All right. We still here, have Mexican flowers going here. Yes, we use a lot of the Mexican flower. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two types. Yeah. This one is for chop and drop. Yeah. All this is just biomass. Biomass. Okay, let me show you another plant that uh, papaya. I also use for myomass. It's right here. And you have this papaya here. Yep. You have different and uh, more papayas around. This is... Uh, yeah, come over here. Uh -huh. This one here is also for chop and drop, and it's a delicious uh, nitrogen fixer. Mm -hmm. It's pitch and pea. Guandule? And, uh, guandules in Puerto and, Rico, and yeah. Puerto Rico. They use that for several dishes, guandules with rice. Mm -hmm. And this tree really over tasty. here? That's a persimmon. Oh, that's a persimmon. Um, okay. But this is an amazing plant. We're going to chop and drop it. Is that okay. the one you said, this is a, a nitrogen fixer? It's a nitrogen fixer. Okay. This is, this is a peach tree right here. Okay. Okay. And like I was talking about, uh, she can show. Okay, this well, is a gigantic moringa tree. Because they are huge. Okay. This tree, like I said, mm -hmm. I cut it down all the way to the ground, yeah. and it comes out in, in uh, uh, late it's April. Leaves and leaves. And it just grows like... <laughs> Amazingly. Okay. okay. So here, this is one of our figs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did take most of our figs uh, off yesterday, and yeah. there were probably got about a hundred, a hundred and twenty out of it. Oh, this okay. is another peach tree. This is another peach tree. Oh, we okay. ate out of this quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, come down. Okay. There. We have paths in this area. Walkways, so yes. We, the, you know. The, the walkways are here. We have one, two, three, four, uh, all the way over there so that mm -hmm. we can, you know, walk through here mm -hmm. and keep the trees organized. What I want to do with this mainly is 
this needs to be a micro uh, climate. Climate. A little forest, full forest, but in I wanted to eat. The winter here is are very mild. They, they do not last long. And if we can keep this, uh, you know, the canopy and everything from keeping the frost out of this area, we are going to be able to grow a lot more fruit. The soil looks amazing. Yes. Very nice, very fluffy. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. but the, the main thing for this is to, uh, the food forest, the way it's set up in rows is to have a canopy that will keep the cold uh, out of it. Mm -hmm. And the warm thing during the, those few days out of the year that we actually uh, get frost or temperatures under 30. Mm -hmm. And hopefully a lot of these plants will continue to grow. Okay, let me show you, I, I talked about peppers. Can you show that pepper plant? Mm -hmm. Look how it's full of peppers. Mm -hmm. Okay, this yeah. one is a tomato. So what the microclimate does in this section is it, it makes this food forest almost self-sustainable. Right. As long as we continue to, to, to grow the, uh, feed the soil, grow the microbes, have tons of plants in here. We should mm -hmm. have a, a canopy the, 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 it, and a windbreak. Uh, all those uh, plants around the, the perimeter for a windbreak. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a beautiful uh, baby loquat tree. Yep. You have one uh, that wave that is gigantic. That's the one that was very productive well, this past spring. Let me show you. This uh, is spring. one of the uh, pigeon peas that uh, I grew from oh. back in April. I put yeah. a seed in here, and look how much this is. Wow. Growing. This is an amazing, amazing tree. For six months growth, this is oh, amazing. Yeah. And it came out of, from a seed. So, so the, the, this is the guandule. That is called in Puerto Rico, so it's actually a plant that can be used for uh, cooking. For uh, okay. Here, let me show you real quick. Uh, this is also a papaya. Okay. Okay. And mm -hmm. you come around here, and you can see the Mexican sunflower. The papayas. Okay. All these were about seven, eight feet tall. I chopped it down. Mm -hmm. about a month ago and they're growing back so, so uh, the chickens eat from here? this from this garden as well what's that the chickens eat from this garden as well i've got a lot of these things and i give them to the chickens yeah okay so right here this is the mexican sunflower coming up it's all the way down okay mm -hmm. this is the the feed so you see the flower oh these are beautiful mm -hmm. Oh, gorgeous flowers. I love that bright orange. Okay. So what is this tree here? Another fig? This is another fig. And let me show you the figs. They're all made. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I have to share them with the uh, birds. And with your wife. And with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, this tree oh. has a lot of them. Mm -hmm. They're already ready to pick, even though I took a lot of them out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or, look at this. It is, they Open are your just hand amazing. So I can see them all. Okay, can you see them? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, that's very ripe, so we're gonna okay. eat that before we finish. So. <laughs> but, the main thing is, uh, I just want to show you the, the what we can do here, this is uh, the, the hill country in Texas. Mm -hmm. You can do this in, in Texas. I have seen a lot of people do it. But if you are one of the persons that uh, is doing something similar, I would love for you guys to share it with us in um, Facebook or on our website. If you can, you know, give us some information, help us uh, learn more of how to do this in the Texas climate. I would really appreciate it. So, thank you so much for uh, being with us. And hopefully you can send us some information. Help and us share out. with us it what is... you're doing in, you know, gardening. And oh yeah, and in about six months, I will show you this area again. Mm -hmm. See how we're doing. Okay. Have a great day.